Hi everybody, this is Mr. Cadenhead. I am excited today to be presenting to you guys our plan for return to in-person learning and our hybrid model. And this is a guide for students, but also probably of great interest to parents. Um, so we tried to kind of take a look at your day as we jump into this hybrid in-person model and think about what it entails from the very start of getting up, getting ready for school, uh, to the time that you leave campus headed home. So we're going to try to give you everything that you need to know to make you comfortable and ready to get back in person if you are group A or group B. I also want to sort of redefine the hybrid model and our groups A, B, and D. So our hybrid model is our big model that encompasses two ways of learning. Uh, either in-person learning, which includes group A, which is here in person on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, as soon as we get the go-ahead from the county and the state, and our group B group will be in person Thursday and Friday, as soon as we get the green light from the county and state. Our group D will remain on distance learning, just like they have been. The only thing that will really change for them is the bell schedule. So make sure that you refer to the bell schedule video that I sent home, as well as the bell schedule copy that I sent to parents and students this last week. It is also posted on our school website if you want to review that as well. So starting Monday, the 15th, we are starting our hybrid bell schedule, even before we get the green light to come back in person. Okay, but today I want to make sure that we talk about how we're going to function with our in-person learners when we do get the green light, which looks like it could be very, very soon, fortunately. Okay, so before you leave home when you get up in the morning for our hybrid schedule, in-person schedule, I'm talking to in-person learners now, you need to make sure you charge your Chromebook. We do not have chargers uh, to plug them in during the day here at school. We've checked all those chargers out to you guys to use those at home. And you can imagine that with about 800 students coming each day, it would be difficult uh, to plug all of those in. You could bring your own device other than a Chromebook, but I'm understanding you may deal with some connectivity issues on our guest network when you try to log in and therefore may have some difficulty accessing all the tools Google Classroom and all associated educational tools that you can access very easily on your Chromebook. The Chromebook is tied into our network, updated automatically uh, through our technology department. Updates software is pushed out to them and you will need a Chromebook if we do test. Coming up soon with the state testing, every student will have to test on the Chromebook. So if you don't have a Chromebook and need to get one, you can stop by our library. You could do so any day including the morning that we get back uh, to grab a Chromebook and be ready to go, okay? Before you leave home also, make sure that you're familiar with our district symptom checker in case you don't feel well. The great advantage really of our hybrid model of being able to remain home if you don't feel well or come into school if you choose to do so and you're feeling well is that nobody should be compelled to come to school if they're symptomatic in any way, shape, or form. The symptom checker, and I'll share this um, presentation with you so you can click on that link as a PDF, uh, is a good way to just kind of follow along and really determine what might be you know, seasonal allergies, for instance, and delineate that between that and, and COVID symptoms, okay? And when it would not be wise to come in. Um, you or your parent each morning before you leave for school needs to make sure that you guys complete the daily frontline screener to acknowledge that you're not symptomatic with COVID symptoms. It literally takes about 30 seconds at the most. I do it every morning. Uh, I believe I check one box and hit submit. It's pretty simple. Um, it does ask you if you are symptomatic in some ways. And if you are, um, you can refer to the screener and you can also refer to the questions and answer the questions honestly in the frontline screener. So it's a pretty simple deal, but we are going to ask you to do that on a daily basis as a good reminder uh, in these times that you shouldn't be coming to school if you're symptomatic in certain ways. Uh, you can begin that by selecting activate account uh, if you go to that link and uh, your any email that you have entered in a parent guardian email can be used in order to get that 
um, symptom checker sent to you and checked in the morning, okay, and create create some kind of link to it. Um, we're trying to come up with other ways that maybe will be more um, efficient for our high school students also to log in themselves and do this themselves. So hold on on that, and I'm hoping I'll have more information soon for you guys if we're able to work with Frontline and have our students complete that themselves. We know that you guys have the capacity to make those decisions yourselves. I do want to emphasis, emphasize again um, that there really isn't any reason to come to school if you're not feeling well, okay? With your parents' permission, uh, you certainly can remain home and log in your classes through Teams or Zoom. So just like our distance learners will be doing, they'll be with you when you're in person, A and B group. Group D will always be logging in at the same time you are and seeing what you see through our cameras in the classroom. So if you have a sore throat, um, and coughing, et cetera, sneezing, whatever, sore throat combined, and it's not just seasonal allergies, stay home. Log into your class. You will be marked present, and I'll cover that again in a few minutes, okay? Again, we understand seasonal allergies. Many of us suffer from seasonal allergies, so we're not looking to send anybody home because you've got seasonal allergies. We certainly can di differentiate between those things. So our in-person students, uh, in terms of attendance, that's groups A and B, you guys are going to be marked just like you were in the past, okay? So when you're present, it's going to say present. If you're not present, if, if you don't log in in any way or show up in any way, you're going to be absent. If you're group A or B and you choose to stay home with parent permission and let's say you don't feel well and you log in through Teams or Zoom, your teacher's going to mark you uh, distance learning present or DLP, just like they are now. So again, uh, in-person learners can be present in one of two ways, marked present and get credit for attending in one of two ways. Show up in person or stay home if you don't feel well with parent permission and log into your class and get marked present by your teacher, okay? If you do stay home and you log in that way, uh, and you uh, get credit for being present through distance learning, parents don't need to notify the school because that counts as positive attendance. But parents do need to recognize that a phone call won't go home, notifying them that the student was home and absent. So parents will have to check on parent portal to see if their student was marked DLP on any day when they expected them to be present, okay? Um, in terms of distance learning uh, students who, this would be uh, students actually on track D, not A and B, sorry, uh, that is my error there. I will change that before I send that out to you. So attendance for distance learning students on track D. This is going to remain the same that you've been doing all along on distance learning. Um, so you will ever, always uh, be marked DLP for distance learning present or DLA for distance learning absent, okay? So nothing changes for our distance learners, our group D, okay? So before you leave home, make sure that you guys have with you a copy of your schedule, especially the first couple days, and particu particularly those of you who are new to our school. Uh, make sure that you have a copy of the three classes you're going to attend that day with the room numbers. A couple tips and tricks and hints. First of all, uh, don't be nervous because uh, we are going to be out in force, uh, administrators, um, campus security, classified staff, and our link crew students will be out on campus before each period the first week that we come back to make sure that we help you guys find your way to class, okay? So you do need a copy of your schedule so you can look at what room number you are assigned. Um, there may be some rooms where we change room numbers by putting a sign on the door and letting classes know they travel certain periods to other teachers' classes, and I can get into that a little bit later as well. Make sure you have your charged Chromebook with you every single day. Uh, make sure that you have a mask and likely a backup mask. I address that later on as well. And if you want to have a snack, it's a little bit of a long day. Remember, we start at 830 and we get done at 12.20 uh, for your grab and go lunch. But between classes outside, if you wanna eat a snack, um, drink something, you can bring that with you as well. And if you wanna have hand sanitizer in your backpack, that's not a bad idea either. Uh, we'll have hand sanitizer stations and hand sanitizer in every classroom. So 
um, you won't have any issue accessing hand sanitizer if you need. Mask etiquette and requirements, these are really important. Um, I Please read the CDC, uh, Center for Disease Control guidance um, at that website above. You're pretty familiar with that now. I won't talk in too much detail about the specifics of that plan. The signs on the bottom right with our bulldog with the, the mask under his chin and under his nose, um, you're going to see those on campus and our A-frames and signage in a lot of places. So just a reminder that your mask must be two-ply uh, of fabric or more, uh, be worn completely over your nose and mouth, and fit um, reasonably snugly, um, not super loose, okay? Um, masks may not be single-layered masks, have holes in them. They may not be a neck gaiter or tied bandana. Um, we have provided gaiters to our athletes, and we have uh, approved them for use outside and during athletics, but they are not approved for classroom uh, purposes, okay? So these, the gaiters that I tried to demonstrate <laughs> in the picture for you guys with the red X, um, I know that our athletes have them right now and they're wearing them on the baseball field, on the football field, et cetera, tennis courts and so on. But that's the purpose of those gaiters. They are a thin gaiter. They help, but they certainly don't help enough to sit next to somebody uh, six feet apart for 70 minutes in an indoor setting. So we want you to be safe. So no gaiters, please. Okay. If you need a mask, you can always ask your teacher. We do have uh, reusable masks uh, for those who need them, cloth masks. And we also have disposable surgical masks if you have a mask that breaks or becomes soiled in any way, shape, or form. Okay, But I would recommend that you keep an extra mask always, as I said, in your backpack and maybe in a plastic bag so you keep it clean in your backpack so you can access that at any time. I know that most of us have those these days, but it's a good reminder as you set up your backpack and get ready to come back. So as you arrive or leave school, make sure that you put your mask on when you enter campus and you're gonna need to wear your mask on campus uh, unless you're eating a snack during our transition times. Um, please do not arrive prior to 15 minutes before your first class starts. We're trying to uh, minimize congregating on campus and make sure everybody's able to uh, stay six feet apart. Remember, we want to be in person. And if we have transmissions, we have positives, and we have folks quarantining, the more that we have that, the harder it is for us to remain in person. And our goal is to stay here and get you guys back to normal, okay? So make sure you do a good job of not congregating and not hanging around campus for right now. Hopefully next year we get back to normal, but please move off campus within 15 minutes afterward, after you get your grab and go lunch potentially. So as you navigate campus, um, you can choose your path of travel really on campus. Uh, on our outdoor spaces, we kind of have an advantage of being a primarily outdoor campus. And, and most of the, the time, you guys all know, except for maybe some of our freshmen, that the door is open and you can go about 100 different directions and scatter around campus. You won't have any trouble uh, finding a path of travel that will allow you to socially distance. You may pass by somebody uh, on your way, but not for any length of time. And um, you have plenty of time between classes now that we move the passing period to 10 minutes really to find your way. Um, the three buildings that are an exception to this, and really I should have added another one, and that is the PE hallway. But the PE hallway, the A building, the HS CETA, uh, which is a two-story building. A building is two-story, but it has outside walkways. Um, and the ACIB, uh, which is really where our art is, remember, and uh, in the downstairs with an outdoor exit. But upstairs IB is an indoor corridor. We want to make sure that, that the path of travel um, starts at the inside of campus and ends on the other side of those hallways. That way, everybody is traveling in the same direction. We're going to slightly stagger our release of classes in that um, each teacher will release one row, then the next row then the next row and stagger the release of their class so the hallways are not overly crowded and you can safely travel out and down the steps okay so um, same thing with a building even though it's outside we've established that we go up the stairs closest to the center of campus 
we go around the outsides of that building and then go down the back stairs, which is closest to the parking lot. Um, PE hallway, we go all the way around to the back by the basketball courts in the outside near the baseball field and come in the, the, the opposite way that you would normally come in. And it's one way directional travel. So you would go in by the basketball courts, out by the center of campus. So it's a little bit the opposite. All right. Otherwise, I, I'm confident that our students will have every opportunity to choose their path of travel and make sure that they're safe and socially distanced. There's a lot of signage around campus that you guys need to observe, and we really need need your help with this, um, especially the first couple days that you navigate these spaces. Just really be aware of the signage. We did our best to create signage that is going to be friendly for you and it is also going to be clear and try to remain on these surfaces but you'll get used to the direction of travel there are one-way arrows on the ground there's exit only on doors entrance etc um, and you guys will get used to it relatively quickly and we'll have campus security attendance and link crew in certain places in the first few days to help assist you guys with that directional travel um, you see more safety signage here in our update up excuse me, upstairs, A corridor, outdoor hallways, you're seeing the arrows on the ground um, and the directional travel outside in that A building corridor outside. In terms of restroom access, um, you're just going to want to make sure that you check the restroom as you enter and make sure that you're able to observe six feet social distancing. We'll be popping in and out of the restrooms at times to make sure we're not crowding in the restrooms, um, camp security, again, uh, administration, et cetera, to make sure that we're doing a good job there. You've got to use your judgment. If you do see that there are too many people in there um, that you cannot socially distance appropriately, stand on one of the dots and wait. If somebody's standing on a dot and waiting uh, for somebody to come out of the restroom, stand on the next dot behind them, please, and wait until uh, they go in and then move forward. You guys have gotten used to this process in many places in our communities that we're navigating now. All student restrooms are going to be open, including some restrooms we have not always had open, like the uh, library slash LRC restrooms that are really right across from my office uh, out here. We're trying to make sure every restroom upstairs, downstairs, inside, um, student government, uh, every every restroom we can get you guys access to that makes any sense at all that you can get in there um, either in the 10 minutes that you have between classes or ask your teacher in order to go use the restroom uh, during class. We're going to be very liberal with supporting you guys with that. Um, so you can use the restroom if you're going to class, for instance, and the restrooms are very full and you want to check in with your teacher, stay for about five to seven minutes, then use the restroom. Uh, when things slow down a little bit, you're, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, they're going to be restrooms will be serviced uh, multiple times a day, but typically right in the middle of that second period of the day where they, they will be sanitized, we'll be checking soap, paper towels, etc. to make sure that we're stocked appropriately to support good hand washing and hygiene. Okay, so passing period, as I said before, it allows 10 minutes for you. Uh, to choose your path of travel and ensure social distancing. And our teachers are not going to be assigning tardies. Administrators and campus security, we're going to take that job. So uh, we want you to feel comfortable that if you need a little bit of extra time to use a restroom, you don't have to panic and get to class because your teacher is going to mark you tardy. We do want you to get to class on time if it's possible. Um, so really uh, what we are looking for is students who are getting there, Selves to class, they're waiting to use a restroom, but they're walking or moving expediently toward class. We are not going to mark you tardy. What we will mark tardy, however, is if you are standing around talking after the bell rings, not moving to class, um, heading in a different direction from your class, etc. We'll just kind of check on you and make sure that we're headed in the right direction and we will assign tardies at some point, okay? Especially for our incoming freshmen as well. There's going to be a lot of grace the first couple of weeks to make sure that everybody knows how to navigate the campus and find where they're going. Um, so no, no anxiety or anything the first uh, week at least, if not longer, so that you find your class and you understand how to navigate the schedule. Don't worry. You'll be fine. It's a big campus, but it becomes pretty logical pretty quickly around here. 
Um, administrators, as I said before, uh, will be wearing a school-themed shirt, like a, a bulldog polo, so that you can find us easily. And campus security and link crew students are going to be out on campus moving around. Campus security has campus security shirts. That's Marv, Lisa, and Leo. And then um, our link crew has link crew t-shirts that they'll be wearing that will identify them. And please ask us if you need anything. If you can't find your class, if you're looking for a restroom that is not uh, full or does not have a line, let us know and we'll point you in the right direction, okay? Uh, one other thing I did want to address that I don't think I put in my presentation is that uh, we do have bottle filling stations. The bottle filling stations are available in the PE hallway, um, in our cafeteria multipurpose room, in our true um, administration building. If you need water, I would bring water, but if you need to refill your water, um, you may be able to ask an adult where the best place is to go. One of us standing out on campus that I just mentioned, where the best place is to go and fill your water. Um, in classrooms, seating charts are going to be mandatory, so we may be able to effectively contact Trace if we need to. So I gave you a picture of a classroom here on the screen. We have carefully spaced out all the desks. We place tape uh, typically at the front left foot of each desk so we know where those desks belong in six feet apart. We've measured every desk from the center of seat to the center of seat. Um, we're going to bring you in to an assigned desk and ask you to stay at that desk. So if we did have a student who is symptomatic or positive, then we were able to co sort of identify who the close occupants were around that student and not need to quarantine an entire class. Um, but they are very carefully measured. So please stay in your seat and make sure you observe your assigned seat. Every teacher will have their seating chart and they will be sharing that with you as well as likely greeting you as you come in the door on the first couple days and showing you where your seat is. So between classes, the desk services are going to be misted with a disinfectant, um, and it typically requires an, a, a 90 second drying time. What we use is called new or neutral electrolyzed water. It's a disinfectant and sanitizer solution. It is highly effective. It's a virtually non-toxic chlorine based disinfectant. Uh, almost like what you would swim in in a swimming pool with a slight, slight chlorine smell. It's been used in the agricultural field on fruits and vegetables for many years. Um, it is safe and effective for all surfaces. Okay, so when you come into class, uh, your teachers will have quickly misted that, given that a little bit of time to uh, dry. As you have 10 minutes, they'll do that right away so it gets a chance to dry before you come in. You should not even notice. Uh, if it is a little bit damp at all, we put paper towels in every single classroom so that we can wipe that down and take care of that for you guys, okay? Um, if you need an early dismissal from class, parents uh, can call the attendance office at the number listed there. Attendance will send a dismissal slip to the student in the classroom, and uh, your teacher will dismiss you at the appropriate time, and then you can meet your parent at their vehicle uh, up here in front of the administration building is the easiest place. We want to be able to make sure you're safe. Um, if you're a student who drives and you're just in the student parking lot, you can do that as well. Um, also, I do want to drop this in. We are not going to ask for a student um, parking permit right now. Um, we, it's, there, we don't have a whole lot of time to worry about that, and we have a whole lot more important things to worry about. So we may get there where we ask you to fill something out, but we certainly won't charge you for it if we get to the point where we ask you to fill out a form identifying your vehicle. Okay, so if we ever had to call a student and have them address something, we would be able to. But we'd have no intention of selling a parking permit this year. Okay, so if a student is ill, make sure that you alert a teacher, campus security, or administrator, and you'll get a pass to the front entrance of the administration building. And at that point in time, when you walk to the administration building, uh, Miss Egan or Miss Gibson, somebody at the front desk will uh, send you to the right place or call a school nurse or um, call an assistant principal or a counselor, or whoever you need to speak to. You will likely, if you're ill, be seen by our school nurse, health clerk, or an administrator, okay? And we'll, we'll work with you guys either on having a parent come pick you up and see what your symptoms are, okay? 
Uh, if you are picking up school lunch, you can do a grab and go lunch. It is available uh, to in-person students at the outside snack bar next to student government. So we will not be going into the multi-purpose room for lunch, um, but there is an outdoor snack bar that we use once in a while. Sometimes when student government uh, send or, or gives out, gosh, candy, ice cream, <laughs> different things uh, down in the student snack bar. Uh, and it is near the entrance to the theater between that and student government and student the old student store. So you can pick up your lunch and you can take it off campus and eat it off campus. Um, those of you who are remaining on distance learning, you can drive through and get your lunch like you've been able to do uh, in our staff parking lot down there on the other side of our kitchen. Okay, that will remain as well. Uh, let's see if we have anything else. I think that covers most of everything. Um, I, th I It should be a pretty easy transition for us. One thing, if you have not been on our campus before, uh, this weekend, today, uh, as I'm recording this video for you guys, uh, it is the 12th. And so if you want to come on the 13th and 14th or even the 15th Monday and walk around campus or Tuesday afternoon with a likelihood of us returning on, a, on Wednesday, if we get the green light from the state and county like we expect we will, you can come walk campus and look for your room numbers. Um, wear a mask, please. Uh, and just walk around and find the three rooms that you need on the first day and the three rooms you need on the second day and just orient yourself, okay? I think that does it for right now. If there anything else comes up, we'll try to address that with you guys as we go. But we look forward to seeing you guys. We know that we're going to have a safe, successful return to in-person learning. And as always, if you have questions for us, please email. You can talk to your teacher first because they're going to be well-educated about this your counselor, your assigned administrator, and you can always get in touch with me. I appreciate you guys and hope you guys have a good weekend. Take care.